All right, group A and B, we are on literature 13. Okay, and if we open up our book, let's actually turn to the page before, which looks like this, if you could turn to this page. All right, it's 24 and 25. What happened here? Remember, a lot was happening here. Christopher Columbus was finally gonna what? Sail. Was he taking his son with him? No, he was staying with the monks, all right? And what else was happening? All the women and children were saying goodbye to who? To their fathers as they leave on this journey. Now remember, was it gonna be a short journey? It was gonna be a very long journey. Let's go ahead and turn the page. All right, make sure, um, follow with your finger, your eyes, and say it with me. All right, I'm gonna go slow. Oh, my book is breaking. All right, hopefully I can hold this for you guys. All right, at first the sailors were boisterous and gay. That means they were cheerful, they were loud, and they were happy, all right? They were the men who dared to sail where no one had sailed before. So what, were they um, frightened men? No, they were adventurous, they were daring, they were brave. All right, and they would return with gold and treasures from the east, remember? Because that's what Columbus wanted to find. He wanted to find land, gold, and treasures. And so these men were what? They were excited. But when they sailed out beyond the Canary Islands and into the vast ocean where even the birds from the outlining rocks could follow them no longer, they began to worry. So why are they worrying? because what, they're on the ship and they can see the island that they're leaving from, or from their, um, from Spain, they can see the Spain and they see birds, but what happened? Birds can follow them no longer. Birds, they'll fly pretty far, but if there's nowhere to land, what's gonna happen? They're gonna go back because they have to rest their wings. So there's no more birds in the sky. The, um, Spain is starting to get smaller and smaller and smaller, just like we did in our art last week. Um, with space, we gave appearance of up close and far. Remember, they're up close to Spain, and then what happened? They slowly started sailing away until what happened? Spain was far. They could no longer see it, so they were starting to what? Were they still brave? No, they were starting to get a little bit scared. Alrighty. There was nothing before them and nothing behind them but the sea and sky. One day, like another, Tom alone in command of his ship, Columbus stood on the poop deck of the Santa Maria. He trusted no one but himself. He could hardly sleep or rest. So he was where? He would go to the poop deck. The poop deck, that sounds kind of funny. The poop deck is actually, um, we call it poop deck, but it was actually a French word, um, and before French, Latin. But the deck, the poop deck is not in the front of the ship, but in the back of the ship. And the poop deck is actually higher than the rest of the deck because there's normally a cabin here. And then so you can stand on top of the cabin. So it was elevated, it was higher than the rest of the ship. And they call it a poop deck. To the west helmsman he called, not the north, not to the south, not to the east, but straight to the west. So which way were they going? West, not north. Not east, not south, but west. He watched the stars. He checked his maps and his compass and kept his ships on a steady course. That means was he um, not looking at his map and kind of going back and forth? No, he was a good captain. He made sure that they were on a steady course that they went straight um, west. He wrote two logbooks. Remember what a logbook is? Remember how we were talking about an atlas in geography? I actually have it right here. Remember we were talking about our atlas in geography? What's an atlas? It has maps of what? Our world atlas has maps <coughs> of, um, of just maps of the world, of uh, America, of Italy, of Spain, of France, and did people know what was out there? No, they had to wait until what? Until someone went there, like Columbus, so they can draw the map and draw out what they had here. Because remember, every place is different. And so that's what he had. He had a log book. He kept, oh sorry, he wrote two log books. So let's see why. Normally you would keep one log book. One he kept hidden. There he wrote day by day how many miles they had sailed 
by his reckoning. That means, was there a machine? Did he have like a, a phone to pull out and go, how much miles did we travel today? No, he didn't have that. So he had to kind of picture, hmm, we traveled about this far. The wind was pushing us really slowly. We traveled maybe 50,000 miles. You know, he had to just kind of do it by his head. He, there was no way to really know. The other logbook, he showed his men. There, the distance from home appeared much shorter and smoother. Oh, much shorter to so smooth their worries. So he had two logbooks. And one has what? The information of how much they really traveled because they traveled far. And did, what was the other one? The one that he showed his men was, um, he showed them like, oh, don't worry. We just traveled this much. We didn't travel this much, even though they did. We just traveled this much. See, we're not that far from, uh, from our land. Our land's really close. It just feels like that because there's a lot of ocean, but we didn't travel that far. Let's see why he did that. Oh wait, Aaron told us why. <laughs> to soothe their worries, because remember, they started off the journey happy and cheerful, and then they started to get worried and worried and thinking, oh, what if there's, you know, what if we f fall off the ocean? Um, what if we bump into a sea monster? What if we go so far and we cannot find our way back? So he wrote two log books, so that way they're what? They're not worried, because he cared for his men. He didn't want them to be so scared and frightened. He, he wanted them to still be cheerful and happy. Each day that passed, the sailors worried more and grumbled louder. Oh, so even though he was doing this to make them feel happy, were, was it, were they believing him? No, they weren't. Not only were they afraid of the unknowing sea, but their waters turned stale. Their food turned rancid. So. When you're on a ship, what happens? Can they stop by Wendy's or McDonald's and order some more food when they run out? No, they have to make sure they have a certain amount of food to last them a long time, right? And not only, does food stay good forever? Well, you have what in your house? You have a fridge, what do you put in your fridge? You put maybe vegetables, you put hmm, leftovers. What happens if you don't have a fridge? Your food goes bad. So imagine not having a fridge at all. All right, so this is an experiment you can probably do at home, but don't use a whole sandwich bread, but ask your mom and dad to cut just a little square of a sandwich bread, all right? Just a little piece. And then you can get it, and maybe so you don't keep it in your house, so you can put on a napkin, and you can stick it maybe somewhere on a table in your backyard, all right? And leave it there for a day, and come back and look at it. Leave it there for another day, and come back and look at what's gonna happen to the bread. It's gonna grow stale, just like there is there is stale. Still means it's hard. The flavor tastes not good anymore. All right, that's not fun to eat food like that every day. Cause what? Would you rather eat stale food or food that your mommy makes? All right, cause what? They were probably used to like you guys, used to eating their mommy's delicious warm food. And then from going to eating nice warm food to eating food that tastes old and tastes hard when it's supposed to be soft, it's not fun. All right. So our last sentence, oh wait, that was our last sentence. Yeah, that's it for literature. All right, so go ahead and let's get out our literature page that looks like this and we're gonna work on it together. All right, it says, when the sailors were afraid, they wanted to go back. How did Columbus help them overcome their fears to go on with this voyage? So remember they were at first, they were happy, and then they started to worry a little more and a little more. And Columbus did something. Can you guys remember? He kept a book, a log book. But did he keep one or two? He kept two. One he kept hidden. And in the one he kept hidden, he had what? All the information that really happened. And in the second log book, he kept information to make them feel better because he cared about his men. He didn't want them to go crazy because they were worrying about if they're gonna live or not. So in the second one, he wrote, oh, we didn't travel this far. We only traveled this far. It may feel like we traveled along, but we didn't. It just feels like that because there's ocean everywhere. Now, why did he do that? Because he cared for his men and he didn't want what? He didn't want them to be sad and scared. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and write, Columbus kept two logbooks. 
one making the distance seem much what shorter then press pause if you need to excellent job all right so down here you have something a little booklet all right and there's a couple of pages three pages in here and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and write log book if you're group a it's your essay log if you're group b we're gonna write log and how do we spell log l l a o g g log so let me go ahead and write log on here very quickly L O G spells log. And if you want to decorate the front page, you can, but only the front page because there's actually an assignment in here that's gonna last you three days. You're gonna keep your own log book. Just like Columbus, he would get up and he'd be like, hmm, we traveled this long. And even, even at nighttime, he would have to do that because he'd have to kind of um, picture in his head how much they traveled at night. All right, or unless they put the anchor down, I'm not sure. But um, he would, well, every day he'd get up and he'd write a log. It's this day, um, night, or it's this year, this day, this year. And he would put what? Everything that happened. Um, three of my men got sick today. We traveled this much. Um, all the birds disappeared this day. You know, he's writing everything that happened. So you guys are about to make your own log for the next three days. So starting today, you can probably do it at the end of the day or you can do it throughout the day. It's up to you. Have your mommy and daddy help you. If you want, if um, you need to, right here, you can have your mom and your dad write what you did. And then right here on this page, you can um, write it in cursive. So you can say, got up at 8.15. Um, did my homework at, you know, 10. Finished at 12 ate dinner at six, went to bed at some, and then you can write it right here, all right? So you're gonna do that for today. And remember, what do log books, log books need? They need the date. So you're gonna write down, I don't know what date you're doing this, um, you know, if you do it today. And then tomorrow you're gonna write the date and do the same. And then the next day you're gonna write the date and do the same. Now, does it have to be very detailed? If you want to tell me everything you ate for breakfast, everything you ate for lunch, and everything you ate for dinner, that is completely fine. But if that's too much work, which I think it might be a little bit too much work for this tiny little book, it can just be a little bit of stuff. Today I got to go to the store. Today I played with my sister, just a little bit. All right, doesn't that be a lot? So you're gonna do this for the next three days, and I'm gonna do one too. And then maybe when we come back to school, we can get our log books and we can each go around and say what we did on those days because we would have our own log book filled out, our own diary of what took place on that day. So make sure it's absolutely very important you put the what? The date on top of each day. Great job.